Well, good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to Facebook Live once again. We are excited to bring something very special this evening. My name is Dino Andriatis, and I'm the lead pastor here at Logos uh, Christian Family Church. And that normally on Wednesday nights, we do Bible study. We've been studying the book of James. But in light of what's been happening, uh, we decided to continue what I shared last Sunday morning. We talked about COVID-19. What is this all about? How are we, as believers in Christ, how are we supposed to deal with this? How are we supposed to respond to this? And I shared Sunday morning. I want to continue on that thing because a lot of people are really... I mean, I've never seen in all my life, this is unprecedented, such mass hysteria on something that I believe the Bible speaks of very clearly. And so how, how do we as believers respond to this? I'm going to address in a few moments those that may not know the Lord and why they're responding the way they do. But how are we supposed to respond? In fact, the truth is that we as believers should be expecting these things to take place. If we know what the Bible is really saying, we need to expect this. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but the opposite, a sound mind has given us power. We need to uh, see that this is part of, of, of what the Bible is saying very clearly, that I believe is a sign of the end times. And I wanna focus in on that, and we're gonna talk more about that on Sunday. But certainly the world is experiencing this pandemic. The word pandemic, is the Greek word panda, which we also get the word pandemonium, which speaks of hysteria everywhere. We see this everywhere. This is what's different from many of the other diseases that we have seen. We've talked about SARS and we've heard about AIDS and we've seen about the flesh eating disease and mad cow disease and the list goes on and on. But we have never seen anything like this ever before. It is unprecedented. And so, I need to share with you tonight what we need to do as believers and what the Bible says. And, and we're going to focus in on some of the scriptures I shared Sunday morning. And what I want to do is I want to read from Matthew 24 to set the tone uh, tonight. And here the Bible is very clear. On the Mount of Olives, Jesus' disciples, they ask him a question, a very important question. In the verse 3 of chapter 24... As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign, they're a sign, very important now, of thy coming and the end of the world, the end of the age. This is very important. And Jesus answered and said, Take heed. In other words, be careful, be alert, that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. We've seen many false Christs over the years, many false cults rising over the years. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. The end is not yet. These are signs that Jesus is telling us of these false Christs and these wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, that's also translated race against race. We've seen a lot of racism today, tremendous amount of racism. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in many places, diverse places. Famines, earthquakes, and pestilence. That's what the COVID-19 pandemic is, the coronavirus. It's a pestilence. And the Bible says here that you are to take heed, you are to watch for these signs before the coming of the age, before the Lord comes back. And then he says, and this is the key verse, Jesus says that all these things are the beginning of sorrows. So these signs that we are seeing that Jesus speaks of, these Famines, these pestilences, these wars and rumors of wars are signs that are coming, that will indicate the coming of the Lord. Now, that term in the Greek speaks of birth pangs. It's the concept of a woman who is pregnant who is about to give birth. And so here's what Jesus is saying. 
As these signs approach us, as they grow in intensity, like a pregnant woman who's about to give birth, the contractions are getting stronger and stronger. As the contractions are getting stronger, that is an indication that she's about to give birth. And so as these signs that Jesus is speaking of here, the famines, the earthquakes, the pestilences, intensify, that will be a sign of this birthing, of the coming of the Lord at the end of age, as we know it today. So this becomes very significant. And if you notice our diagram, uh, our Pastor Josh is going to show us now a diagram that is extremely important. We are here in the church age, right here. When Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected, and the early church began in the upper room, the church was formed. We are now living in that age called the church age. 2,000 years approximately have passed. The next great event when it comes to Bible prophecy is the rapture of the church. When Jesus comes back, these signs that we are talking about will intensify. And when they reach an apex, the Lord will come and rapture his church. We want to explore this tonight. Last Sunday we talked about... The four horsemen, these are also signs that Jesus speaks of. They parallel here in Matthew 24. Josh, if you can show me Revelation chapter 6, we're going to look at the first eight verses. We talked about this last Sunday. We want to bring it in perspective here tonight as we continue on this theme. The Bible says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, I heard, as it were, noise of thunder of one four beast saying, Come and see. So he opens up and he sees uh, a certain beast and he's telling us, John, I want you to come and see what's about to happen. We see that term four times here. And I saw behold a white horse, very significant. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Notice the white horse. Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, these are four seals which are plagues that are released upon the earth, judgments. I heard the second beast saying, come and see, you gotta come and see this. This is important, something incredible is happening. What is happening? Watch this. And there went out another horse and it was a red color and power was given to him and he sat there on to take a piece from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. So we see a white horse, we see a red horse, and now notice this. And when he had opened the third seal, now these seals are judgments. They are plagues that are released upon the earth. Very important. I heard the third beast say, come and see, come and see, come. You gotta see this. This is important. Something incredible is about to happen. And beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him, a pair of balances in his hand. Verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the, and the wine. There's going to be a change in the economy. Something's going to happen in the economy because of this famine. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of a fourth beast saying, Come and see, come and see, a fourth beast. What color is it? Verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. It's the word chlorin in the Greek, which means a pale color. It's what we get the word chlorine from. It's a pale greenish color. A deathly color. And his name that sat upon him was death, and hell followed him. And the power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts. Now this is a very important word. We talked about this last Sunday. The beasts of the earth. So I want you to notice this. I'm going to put it in perspective. Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24 certain signs that will take place upon the earth before the coming of the age, before the Lord comes back. And he talked about wars. He talked about famines and disease and pestilence and earthquakes. Signs in the heavenly. This is exactly what John sees after Jesus is gone. After his resurrection. This revelation was written uh, 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 at least uh, 80 years to 90 years after Jesus rose from the dead. 
And John is virtually saying the same thing that Jesus is saying. God gives John a vision and speaks through John of these events that will take place. Deception. This is a picture of the white horse that we have here in Revelation. It's a deception. We see deception all over the earth today. Jesus spoke about wars and rumors of war. That's what John saw, the red horse, speaking of bloodshed and war that's going to take place upon the earth. You notice how they are compatible together. These are parallels. Then Jesus spoke of, 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 of earthquakes and signs and devastation and famine. That's the black horse that rides upon the earth. And then Jesus speaks of this pestilence. That's the pale horse. And we said, notice the beasts of company. And it's interesting that in these plagues, in these pestilences, they're accompanied by animals. In other words, the animals are the root reason why these pestilences come about. For instance, the, the bubonic plague, in the Middle Ages, it killed one third of Europe. The most devastating pestilence caused by rats. Malaria, yellow fever, typhoid, all caused by mosquitoes. The smallest creature is the most deadliest creature, the mosquito. And then John says, these pestilences that will take place in the future, remember, these diseases, these earthquakes, these, all these things that Jesus is talking about will grow in intensity. And John now is speaking that these diseases and these signs are now reached the apex. They're in full bloom right now. And that will take place during the tribulation period. But notice the beasts. When you look at COVID-19, we talked about it Sunday. How did this start? Well, we know it started in Wuhan, China. And we know that in China, they sell exotic meats, zebra meats, uh, monkey meats, etc., 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 rat meat. And they also sell bat meat. And it is believed that this disease that's transferred from animal to animal and from the pig, eventually somebody bought this meat that was infested. And what happened, it course caused this infection and this disease to take place. And now it's spread throughout the world. But notice the beasts. That's how it started. That's where we are in today, this pandemic. And so we wanted to explain a little bit before we tackle our subject tonight. Now on Sunday, you don't want to miss Sunday. Brothers and sisters, I urge you. I'll be talking about more of these signs. Jesus said in, in, in Luke chapter 21 verse 25, And there shall be a sign, there's that word again, A sign in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress to all nations. And then he says, And then you will see the Lord coming. In the clouds and in power. Jesus says before I come again. There are going to be certain signs. And there will be these stars. Appearing upon the earth. John speaks of this as well. In Revelation 6. And Revelation 8. The word star in the Greek is the word asteroid. What Jesus is saying. Is that there is going to be asteroids. And many scholars believe. And scientists. That there is going to be a huge asteroid. That is going to come and hit the earth. And this has been, actually they have, uh, are, they have pro proven this. Scientists today discovered an asteroid that I'm going to be talking about on Sunday that's traveling 28,000 miles an hour on course to hit the earth at 2029. And if it does hit the earth, it will hit the earth between Mexico and California. And I'll be talking a lot about that. There's a possibility of that. But what they say for sure, if it doesn't hit the earth, it's going to come close to it. That is a certainty. These are bona fide scientists from NASA. Friends, these are the signs that Jesus is talking about. That's one of them we'll be looking at this Sunday. Tell your friends, get on Facebook, get a watch party going. I tell you, this is the message for the hour. I am so passionate about this because I believe this is true. Friends, what I'm telling you tonight is true. What I'm telling you tonight is not speculation. It's not my opinion. It's what the Bible declares. And tonight we want to look at the eschatological calendar when it comes to Bible prophecy. And I, I want to go back, Pastor Josh, to the diagram that I want to show you that will set us up and give us our the tone for tonight's message. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, when Jesus uh, left this earth, he died on the cross, he rose on the third day, ascended to heaven, the church began. And there's all kinds of signs and events that the Bible is speaking of that will lead up to the rapture. What I'm trying to say to you, the next great uh, prophecy that needs to be fulfilled, every other prophecy has been fulfilled up to this point. Remember, the Bible is the only book that speaks on prophecy. No other religious book does because no other religious book is truly inspired by God. Only the Bible is. The Bible tells us that every word comes from divine inspiration. Only God knows the future. Only God knows about prophecy. He's the author of prophecy. And this is what the Bible says, that the rapture is the next prophecy that needs to be fulfilled, that has not yet been fulfilled, that is going to be fulfilled. And there's signs that we are talking about that will lead us to this point where the rapture will take place. And I believe, brothers and sisters, we're right here. I believe the Lord is coming very, very soon. And COVID-19 is one of those signs that we're talking about. And these signs will intensify just before the coming of the Lord. Remember what Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows. And that's what we are looking at. Once the rapture takes place, then seven years of tribulation will take place upon the earth. Those who've rejected Christ, those who've rejected God during this time. You see, this 2,000 year period is an opportunity for people to come to Christ. But once the church is raptured, once the Lord comes again, we will enter into another dispensation where it's going to be like hell on earth. This is what the four horsemen of the apocalypse, what we just read, is all about. You see, Revelation chapter 6 that we just read, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse. These are plagues released upon the earth during the tribulation period. All these signs that we're talking about, these contractions, these beginning of sorrows will intensify to a, a, a complete a crescendo of these plagues that will be released during the tribulation period. That's what's going to happen upon the earth, friends. And I don't guarantee many things alike, but I guarantee you the word of God is true. Jesus is coming soon. The rapture is about to take place. And once that takes place, the world is going to experience a tribulation that it has never experienced before. The question is, are you ready? I believe the Bible. Now, before we get into our text, I believe the Bible for many reasons. But I know that when I first became a Christian, I didn't know anything about God. I never went to church. I, if I picked up the Bible, it was for one second at a hotel room. I couldn't understand it and I threw it away. I would laugh and mock at people that would come and tell me about the Lord. Believe me, I was not raised in church. I knew nothing about God. I didn't even understand what Bethlehem was all about, let alone the coming of the Lord. Well, I'll tell you, I eventually came to Christ in California in 1980. And Shortly after that, I saw something I have never seen before in my life that changed my life. And that's one of the reasons why I preach on this subject everywhere I go. I was in my room and it was at night and something strange happened. At first, I didn't know whether it was a dream because I was just about to go to bed, but I saw, I believe it was a vision. And in this vision, remember, I've never been to church. Uh, I, I, I never read the Bible. I didn't read any books on this. Nothing. Nobody ever spoke to me about this. And I saw myself in this large gathering outside somewhere. It was cloudy. And all of a sudden, as I'm in this gathering, I heard a loud sound. It was like a boom. But I, now, as I understand, it was more like a trumpet sound. And I looked to my right for some reason, and I saw people... And I saw that their bodies, their flesh no longer was flesh. They, they, they began to rise. It was like their spirit began to rise. And I noticed people around me rising in the air. And I remember thinking about this in this vision. And then instinctively I looked to myself. And I couldn't, I, I realized I, I was experiencing the same thing that these people were experiencing. I started to rise. And as I looked up. As I was rising, I saw this figure. 
that to this very day I can never ever get out of my mind. It is as clear as it can ever be. And I saw a, a figure that I know is Jesus coming down and I'm rising. I, I saw this robe, but I couldn't make out his face because his face was full of light, permeating, brighter than the sun, but yet it didn't blind me. And as I saw the Lord, I woke up from this. And I, what did I just see? And of course, later on, as I started to grow as a believer, I realized that I saw the rapture. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, that the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's what I'm doing tonight. I'm comforting you. I'm explaining to you. This is what I saw. I never knew it was in the Bible. It changed my life, and immediately I began to share the gospel with people. This subject of the rapture, of the coming of the Lord, has been very dear to me, and I've been preaching this all my ministry. But I tell you, after 35 years of preaching this, I have never seen what we are experiencing today. I believe this COVID-19 is the beginning of sorrows, uh, one of the signs that Jesus spoke of, that it's simply going to escalate. Should we expect something more? Which my title tells me, COVID, is there another one coming? That's the title for tonight's message. The answer emphatically is yes. And it's going to be even stronger. And not only pestilence, but famines and earthquakes. And signs in the heavenlies and asteroids. And all these things we will see come. And I'll be talking more about that on Sunday. But tonight we find ourselves in chapter 5. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to set a picture of this whole eschatological uh, uh, background of what we are to expect when it comes to Bible prophecy. Now the church has been raptured in chapter 5 and John gets a glimpse into heaven. And so Pastor Josh, can you give me chapter 5 and this is my text tonight. COVID-19, is there another one coming? Well, let's find out what the Bible says. In chapter 5, this is my text tonight. And I saw John seeing this in a vision. He's on the Isle of Patmos. He's been, he's been um, banished on this island. And God speaks to him and gives him revelation of what is going to happen in the future. This is, this is 2,000 years ago, more or less. He gets a vision of this. Listen carefully. And I saw in the right hand of him, he's speaking of Jesus, that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. There's seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, not in your near under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, and the four beasts, and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden male halls and full of odors and which are the prayers or aromas, this word, of the saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on earth forever. And behold, I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and, and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Wow, what a scene we have here. Now let me give you the backdrop very quickly. Revelation 1 to 3, Jesus has a message to the churches. He gives a word to the churches. 
In chapter 4, there's no mention of the churches. The church now has been raptured. John gets a vision of heaven. In chapter 5, John continues with this vision of heaven. And he sees one who has a scroll, a scroll or a, a book in his hand. In his right hand. And he sees this vision of heaven. God has pulled back the curtain of eternity and lets John, gives him a glimpse of what's going on in heaven. And he sees a throne and he sees someone sitting on this throne and he sees lightning and voices and thunder, crystal sea. He sees rainbows around the throne and he sees exactly what Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 14. Josh, if you've got that scripture for me, you see the Bible always confirms the Bible. And in the Old Testament, we see another man who gets a vision of heaven as well. And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second, the face uh, of a man. And the third, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. Continue. And the cherubs were lifted up living creatures that I saw with the river of Shabar. And he goes on to explain exactly what John sees in heaven. And so we see the parallels here. That this is a, a reality that both these men see very similar things as did Daniel also. The Bible always confirms the Bible. Now I want you to notice here in verse number one that the one who's sitting on the throne has a book in his right hand. This book is a scroll. These scrolls have seven seals. The seven seals are plagues. They are, are diseases, bowls or bowls that are released upon the earth. Just like we talked about the four horsemen with pestilence and, and disease and famines and earthquakes that Jesus speaks of. This is exactly what John sees here. And notice that the one who's holding this book with his right hand, which speaks of power, is none other than Jesus. Someone's crying, who's worthy for someone to open this book? Who can open this book? Only God can open this book. And someone declares, yes, the one who's sitting on the throne is worthy. Jesus is the one who's worthy. Only Jesus is worthy. And there are given names to him. And I want you to notice this book. This book becomes very significant. You know, the Bible speaks of several books. There's the book of life where all the names of people who have received Christ enter into this book. There's the book of works and testimonies where all our works will be recorded. Do you know that your works are being recorded every day, how you live in this eternal book, the book of works that the Bible speaks of? Ecclesiastes says in the 12th chapter, says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is life all about? Solomon says, fear God, keep his commandments. For God shall bring into judgment every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Nothing will be done in secret that will not be exposed. Everything will be revealed. And Jesus is holding this book, this other book, this fourth book, a scroll in the right hand. And the Bible says it is written on the inside and on the outside, which is an indication that the scroll is full. It's full. Everything now is complete. Now it's going to be released. The time has come for what these scrolls mean to be released upon the earth. These seals are plagues and, dry and, and, and disease. And they are now going to be released upon the earth. The time has come. And that time is during the tribulation period. And also just before the tribulation period takes place. The beginning of sorrows. I believe the time that we're in right now, the Greek word keros, the time has come. We are in that time. This is a special time that we are in right now, brothers and sisters. I believe COVID-19 is part of that time. This scroll is the title deed of what is about to happen upon the earth. This is very serious. And I, I, I am burdened because a lot of people are so oblivious to this. My friends, there is a God, there is a heaven, and there is a hell. There is a place of eternity. Jesus came to this earth for a purpose, to touch your life and to touch my life. Do you think Jesus came and died on the cross just to be a martyr? Absolutely not. 
He came to save you and to save me. He came to prepare a place for us, the Bible says. And we have this chaos, this time on earth to make decisions whether we are going to serve God or not. And God has given us Bible prophecy and signs so that we can pay attention and see that this is a reality. Every prophecy in the Bible has been fulfilled. Everyone. And I'm going to be talking about later a prophecy that Daniel made that's absolutely inconsistent. It's, it's unbelievable how accurate he was. He actually prophesied which kingdom will come to power and which kingdom will fall. And when he made these prophecies, some of those kingdoms weren't even a nation yet. And we'll talk about that later. And so here we are in verse 1. Who is worthy to open this book? And one points to Jesus. And Jesus now is about to open this book. And I want you to notice there's three names given to Jesus here that we need to look at. That's very important. In verse number 5, the elder said, the Lion of Judah. Jesus is referred to as the Lion of Judah. In Genesis chapter 49, there's a prophecy of where the Messiah will come. It will come from, from the tribe of Judah. Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. He is the Messiah. Another name that's given to him is the root of Jesse. This speaks of his humanity. That the Messiah must come from the line of Jesse. From the line of David. And we know in Isaiah 11, it speaks of, G of, of David coming from the line of, of, of Jesse. And that Jesus comes from the line of David and Jesse according to Matthew chapter 1 all of this has been prophesied Jesus is called the son of David blind Bartimaeus I believe it's in Mark chapter 10 cried out to Jesus and he called him son of David son of David have mercy upon me it's a messianic term it speaks of Jesus he is the root of David the root of Jesse it speaks of Jesus' humanity as well as his deity and then notice the Bible calls Jesus the lamb that was slain. Verse number six. This is a picture of sacrifice. A picture uh, of death. A, a picture where Jesus died upon a cross. Uh, the lamb that was slain. This is a picture of Christ's blood being spilled for you and me. And here in this text the focus is on worship. The focus is worshiping this lamb. And there's four things I want to talk to you about the lamb. Because this becomes crucial. In chapter 5 and the rest of the Bible, 28 times the term lamb is used referring to Jesus. Why? Because of how important the term lamb is. Lamb is a picture of a sacrifice. That Jesus sacrificed his life for you and me. But he's also referred to as a lion. And I want to share with you some of the contrast, yet some of the parallels between lamb and lion. Because Jesus is both the lamb and the lion. And here we see a picture of that. In verse number 6, the lamb is standing. He's standing. This is important. Why is he standing? I thought he was sitting in verse 1. Yes, he is sitting. But there's a time between verse 1 and verse 6. When someone is sitting, Jesus, when he finished his work on the cross, he ended up, of course, in glory. He's sitting on the throne. Sitting on the throne is a picture that my work is over. The word is teleosa. When Jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished, that work of salvation is over. He's now sitting on the throne. My work is done. I've accomplished what I came to do. But something happened now in verse number 6. He's standing. Why is he standing? He's getting ready. Something's about to happen. He's getting ready to come back on the earth. Very important we understand that. He's getting ready. Judgment is about to be released. And he's coming back to execute that. Josh, can you please give me the diagram? I want to bring you, as he's standing, what is he standing for? As I mentioned, he's coming back. So once the church is going to be raptured, they're going to be in heaven here for seven years. During the seven year period, the church will be going through a, a judgment of their own as a Christian judgment. Our works will be tried. Our works will be judged how we lived here on earth according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and also Corinthians chapter 5 on the Bema Seat judgment. This is not for your salvation, you're saved. This is for your works and the rewards. And we'll also be experiencing the marriage supper of the Lamb. While that's happening in heaven with the church, on earth tribulation is taking place. The most gruesome time in all of human history. World War II was horrific. 
This will make World War II look like a tea party. Especially the last three and a half years. Now here it is. He's getting ready to come back. Not for the rapture, that's already taking place. But for the second coming of the Lord. Here he's going to come back to fight what is called the Battle of Armageddon. We see that later on in chapter 19. He comes back on a white horse to fight the enemy, to destroy him once and for all. And we will accompany him, the saints, the church. That's going to happen after the seven years. So listen carefully. If we're probably right about here, just before the rapture, I believe eschatologically we're right here. I believe the next great event is the rapture. Once the rapture takes place, tribulation, horrific tribulation, Revelation 6, the four horsemen that we talked about last week, all these diseases and pestilence that we're talking about, like COVID, will escalate and many people will die. Antichrist will rise during this time. The mark of the beast will be issued. We'll talk about that later. The mark of the beast is a sign that you will receive. Most of us have heard of it. Even if you're not a believer, you've heard of the number 666. That's the mark of Satan, the devil. And you won't be able to buy or sell anything unless you have that mark. But if you get that mark, you have renounced God and there'll be no hope for your salvation. That's what the world is heading towards, friends. The rise of the Antichrist. So as we're waiting for Christ to come, there's also the other side where the Antichrist is getting ready to rule. But it's only going to be for a period of time. Jesus will come back and destroy Satan himself who will live within this man, this antichrist figure. He's a man and I believe it's possible that he's alive today. I really do. Could be a boy, a young person, I don't know. But he's alive today. I, I believe it's a possibility. And if he is alive, my friends, the rapture will take place very soon. And in the second coming, he will destroy the devil and he will be bound for a thousand years. And that's another session we'll talk about sometime. But here we are in chapter 5. Jesus is getting ready. He's called the Lamb. The Lamb who was slain. The Lamb who was standing. The Lamb who was slain. In, in chapter 53 of Isaiah, this slain Lamb speaks of a sacrifice. That Jesus was sacrificed for you and me. And we must never forget this sacrifice. If you remember Thomas... The Bible says there's marks, that, that, that he still has the marks on his, in his, in, on his wrists and on his side. That's how Thomas was able to recognize Jesus when he came back. When Thomas doubted Jesus, Thomas was in a sense almost mocking Jesus. When he came back from, from the dead, Jesus made a beeline right for Thomas and said, Thomas, Thomas, you said you'd only believe if you would see. Here, Thomas, here you go, Thomas. And Thomas fell on his knees and he said, Oh God, my God and my Lord. He saw the Lord. He saw his marks. Those marks will never leave. Why? So we will never forget what Jesus did for us on the cross. That's why every communion we take, it's a, we, we remember what he did for us. We must never forget what Jesus did on the cross. That's why he's referred to as the lamb that was slain. That's why he's referred to here as the lamb that is standing. But he's also referred to as the lamb who is strong in verse number 6. I want you to notice what's happening here. And in the midst of the throne, there are four beasts. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb and he's been slain. We just talked about having seven horns and seven eyes, which are seven spirits of God sent forth to all the earth. A strong seven horns, seven eyes. Seven speaks of strength, speaks of power, speaks of completion. And if you want to see who Jesus really is, you've got to look at Revelation chapter 1. Because Revelation speaks of Jesus and who he really is. Jesus is not a babe that was born in the manger. That was a picture of his humanity. But I'll tell you the Jesus that John sees. The Bible says here that Jesus here says, I turned to see him in the midst of the seven candlesticks. I saw him. His head was as hairs of white like wool, white as snow. His eyes were a flame of fire. And this, and this feet like fine brass uh, that burned in the furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth came a, a sharp edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shines. Can you? That's exactly what I saw when I was in California when I had that vision. This is what John sees. 
This is who Jesus is. And he's coming back. He's powerful. He's strong. He's omniscient. There's a picture of, of the one who's standing strong, ready for action, ready to execute judgment upon the earth, ready to complete Isaiah 61, where we see the vengeance of the Lord. And finally, we see him here. He's searching. Verse number six. He's searching. The beasts, they stood. They've been slain. And his seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Seven eyes, he's searching. Seven eyes, again, it speaks of perfection. Seven spirits speaks of perception of one spirit. Jesus knows everything. He sees everything. In Revelation 2 and 3, he gives a word to the church and he says, I know your works. I know what you're doing. And God has a word for you too, my friend. He knows who you are. He knows what you're doing. He knows what I'm doing. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He knows your address. He knows the tears that spill from your eyes. He knows the pain you go through. He sees the joy you go through. You can't avoid God. You can't escape from God. I can't escape from God. He sees who you are. He knows who you are. And he loves you. With a passionate, unbelievable, glorious love that brought him to the cross for you and me. He's the omniscient one, the omnipotent one. And his eyes are running to and fro throughout the earth. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. That's what the Bible says. Showing himself strong to those whose hearts are committed to him. He wants to reveal his love to you. He wants to reveal his grace to you, his mercy to you and to me. That's why he has these signs. So we can see the truth. And he comes to us and he asks us to open our hearts to the word of God and to what he wants and what he's doing today in our midst. Do you think all these are circumstances? Do you think these are coincidences? All these diseases that we've had in the past? These are just the beginning of sorrows. SARS, AIDS, Ebola, H1N1. All these things are signs. Now COVID, they're escalating. Do you notice? In intensity. Do you see? God is getting our attention. And so here we see a picture of heaven. And that the Lord is coming back. You see, the lamb is our lion. And we see the contrast. The lamb is a reference to his first coming. The lion is a reference to his second coming. The lamb is a reference to his humanity. The lion is a reference to his majesty. The lamb speaks of grace and mercy and forgiveness. But the lion speaks of majesty and rule. He's coming back to rule. He's coming back he, to take the keys as he did in Revelation 1, but to execute judgment upon the earth. And we will reign with him, the Bible says, forever and ever. He is our king. He is the lion of Judah. A lion's roar can be heard for at least five miles away. Well, there's a roar that Jesus, and you can hear him all the way up to glory. He's coming back. This is the roar of the Lord. And the question is, are you ready to receive him? And so we see in chapter 5 that Jesus is standing. He wants to reclaim the earth. To reclaim the keys that he took. And notice in verse 14, Pastor Josh, I want you to notice how the church is receiving Jesus. Remember, the church has been raptured now. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders, this many scholars believe is the church, fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Notice in heaven, there is a, a worship going on. The elders are worshiping. The redeemed are worshiping. Something's happening here. They're receiving the Lord and they're worshiping him and they're praising him. And Jesus is receiving this worship. Here we see a glimpse of heaven, the throne, the 24 elders, they're casting their crowns. We see, we see uh, 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 all this glorious, uh, uh, there's lightning and there's the, the crystal sea and there's a rainbow surrounding the throne in chapter 4. We hear angels and cherubims crying out, holy, holy is the Lord. There's a great orchestra and crescendo of praise and worship. And these seven seals that he has in his right hand are now ready to be released upon the earth. So in the midst of worship, there's wrath. Hard to imagine. In the midst of praise, in jubilation, judgment is about to be released upon the earth. You see, chapter 5 is a tone that is set 
for chapter 6, which is the tribulation period. And I believe we are somewhere between chapter 3 and chapter 4 in Revelation, where the rapture is about to take place. And in verse 11 and 12 of chapter 5, notice the Bible says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Every creature breaks up in, breaks out in adoration. Notice verse 9, they're praising Him, they're worshiping Him. It says, Say with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lord. And they sung a new song. They're singing new songs. What do you mean new songs? It's a new song because it's something new. The Redeemer have experienced something new that has not been experienced before. What is that? Salvation and redemption. They got this song that is taking place in their hearts because of this experience with God. And that's what I want to close with tonight. You see, what I want to say is that these people that have not come out from the rapture, gone through it, they've experienced Christ. A lot of them went through a lot of trials and tribulation. And they're singing a song, Thou art worthy. They're singing a song that's deep within them. But what's amazing is the angels aren't singing that song. Only the redeemed, the Bible says. Now why can't the angels, the angels can't sing the song of the redeemed because angels can't be redeemed. Only man can. See, angels, they're glorious, but, but God came to die not for angels. He came to die for human beings like you and me. The redeemed are singing. You see, when you come to know Christ, there's a song that rises up within you. Peace and joy. It's a song that can only be sung when you experience who he is. Let me ask you, do you know that song? The song of joy. That's what God wants to give you. That's the hope that we have, my friends. That one day we're going to see him. One day he's coming back very soon. We're going to be raptured and brought into heaven. And we're going to sing this new song of praise. We're singing this new song because we've experienced this salvation. Friends, I'm telling you, he's coming soon. COVID-19 is just a sign. Get ready. Jesus said, when you see these signs, look up because your redemption draws nigh. This Sunday, you don't want to miss it. I'm going to give you some facts and figures. I tell you, it's absolutely amazing. Let people know about it. Get, get a watch party going. I believe God wants to touch lives. I believe God wants to touch you. Maybe you don't know him tonight. This is your opportunity. Just let him in. Just let him in. Let him come in, let him wash you, let him cleanse you, let him give you peace. If you ever need to speak to me, you can contact me here at Logos Church. I'd love to speak with you. I'd love to pray with you. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. My name is Dino Andriatis, pastor here of this church. God bless you. We love you. We say that sincerely. And we hope to see you again on Sunday. Bye-bye for now.